Today we're going to show you how to install a Juniper Networks redundant power system. To install the RPS, you'll need these parts. Two mounting brackets with eight mounting screws, one RPS cable, a 930 watt AC power supply, which come with the RPS. You'll also need the following parts, which don't come with the RPS. Screws to mount the RPS to the rack, an ESD grounding strap, and a number one Phillips head screwdriver. Before beginning the installation, you should read the RPS manual for important safety information. This video can act as a supplement, but it doesn't replace the documentation. You'll need two people to install the RPS, one to lift it and one to secure it to the rack. We recommend that you install the RPS without any power supplies in it. Then you can install the power supplies later. The RPS has no traditional front or back. You can install it with either the power supply side or the switch connector side facing the front of the rack. Today we're going to install the RPS in a 19 inch rack with the power supply side facing the front of the rack. Before installing the RPS in the rack, attach the mounting brackets to the chassis. Align the holes in each mounting bracket with the corresponding holes on each side of the chassis, then insert the screws and tighten them. Have one person lift the RPS and position it in the rack, aligning the holes in the mounting bracket with the holes in the rack and making sure that the chassis is level. Then have the second person secure the RPS to the rack using the rack screws. Next, we'll install a power supply in the RPS. First, attach the ESD strap to your bare wrist and to the ESD point on the RPS, or if your entire rack is grounded, to a point on the rack. The first power supply must be installed in the center slot of the RPS. If you don't install it in the center slot, the RPS won't power up. So again, center slot first. Using the screwdriver, loosen the locking lever screw and push down on the locking lever until it's in its lowest position. Using both hands, slide the power supply into the center slot until it's fully seated. Push the locking lever up to its highest position and then tighten the locking lever screw. Now we'll connect the power supply to the AC power source. Each power supply in the RPS must have its own dedicated AC power source. Before you connect the power supply to the power source, you should connect the RPS to earth ground according to your site's safety requirements. Be sure to read the RPS manual for more information on earth grounding. Before installing the power cord into the power supply, you should install the power cord retainer. Squeeze the two sides of the power cord retainer and insert the L-shaped ends into the brackets. Then insert the coupler end of the power cord into the AC power inlet. Push the cord into the slot in the adjustment nut and turn it clockwise until it's snug against the base of the coupler and until the slot in the adjustment nut is at least 90 degrees from the top of the power supply. If the AC power source has an on-off switch, set it to the off position. Plug the power cord into the AC power source. Again, if the AC power source has an on-off switch, set it to the on position. Verify that the AC OK LED on the power supply is steadily lit. The RPS powers up as soon as the power supply is connected to AC power. When the SIS LED on the front of the RPS is steadily green, the RPS is powered up and ready to be used. Before connecting the RPS to the switch, make sure that the switch is powered on and is configured to recognize the RPS. Now by default, the RPS sets the priority for the switches that are connected to it based on the location of the switch connector on the RPS. See the RPS manual for more information on the switch priorities. Now let's connect the RPS to the switch. Remove the cover from one of the switch connectors on the back of the RPS. For this installation, we're using switch connector five, which by default has the highest priority. Insert one end of the RPS cable into the switch connector, making sure the Juniper logo is facing up. Then remove the cover to the RPS connector on the back of the switch. 
insert the other end of the RPS cable into the switch connector. Once both ends of the RPS cable are connected, the RPS software begins configuring the link. After about a minute, verify the status of the connection by checking the status LED that corresponds to the switch connector on the RPS. If the status LED is lit and steady, it means that the RPS is connected to the switch. If the status LED is blinking, it means the RPS is supplying power to the switch. And if the status LED is off, it means that there is no connection between the RPS and the switch. So there you have it. The installation is complete. For more information, you can read the RPS manual on the Juniper website at the URL shown.